Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and to a what I eat in a day with some vegan recipes for you to try. On this day for breakfast, I had a muesli yogurt bowl. The muesli that I used is by Dorset Cereals. This is their Simply Delicious muesli, which is high fiber and vegan, as are all of their mueslis. There's no added sugar and in this one it's mostly just wheat flakes, dates, seeds, hazelnuts and brazil nuts. I put some of that in a bowl and then I added in some of Alpro's vanilla yogurt, mixed it all through and then I took some cashew butter. This is just smooth cashew butter and I added some of that on top as well as some berries. I had some strawberries, raspberries and blueberries and I finished with some pumpkin seeds on the top as well. Just a super easy and delicious breakfast. The oats quickly absorb the moisture from the yogurt and it almost becomes like overnight oats. But then there's the chewy, juicy sweet dates, the crunchy sunflower seeds, hazelnuts and brazil nuts, and with the creamy cashew butter and the fresh berries, it's all so tasty, filling and nutritious. For lunch I made my tomato and herb lentil soup. I started by just really finely chopping up a white onion. Then I added that to a large pan with a little olive oil. Next I minced up two cloves of garlic and added that in with the onion as well. Then I just fried those off until they began to soften. I then took some fresh herbs. Now these are from my garden and are kind of what's left over from last year. Ideally I would use rosemary, oregano and thyme but I didn't have any oregano so I used a teaspoon each of rosemary, sage and thyme and I chopped those up really finely. I added those into the pan along with a teaspoon of paprika and a good pinch of sea salt flakes and then continue to just fry it off. The sage in particular needs to be fried well. After a couple of minutes, I then added in a third of a cup of tomato puree and turned that through the pan. I then took a can of brown lentils and just drained off the water, gave them a good shake and added them into the pan as well. I made up 500 milliliters of vegetable stock using a low salt vegetable stock cube. I then poured that into the pan and seasoned with a good amount of cracked black pepper, gave it another good stir through and just left it to simmer gently on a low heat. I also sliced up some mixed olive bread that I had and just popped those in the toaster to toast them, spread on some vegan butter once they were done and I had that with my soup, which I'd finished with some more fresh thyme just on the top. This has been one of my go-to lunches over the winter and now into the spring on colder days. It's so warming and so filling, but it's really easy and quick to make. Plus it makes two good size portions, so I can often have the leftovers for lunch another day of the week. I love a good tomato and basil soup, but there's lots of good fragrant flavors in this from the mixed herbs. And you can switch up whichever herbs you want to use. And as I mentioned, it's super filling and protein packed from the lentils. And with some warm buttered bread, this olive bread was particularly good with these flavors. It just makes for a really delicious meal. something extra later on in the day I had a matcha latte this is standard for me most days as a little something mid-afternoon and in the summer I tend to have it iced my favorite matcha is from bird and blend this was just their pure grade matcha but their ice cream matcha is unbelievably good with some sweetened oat milk I had that with one of these Rhythm 108 chocolate peanut butter soft baked filled cookies. I believe they also do a chocolate hazelnut version of this as well. And yeah, the name says it all. It's almost like a freshly baked cookie. It's so soft with chocolate chips and crushed peanuts on the top and then a thick 
oozy peanut butter filled center. So rich and delicious. I've always loved Rhythm 108's vegan snacks. Their chocolate bars are unreal. And this is a new favorite for me from them. Then for dinner that evening, I made my soy mince and red pesto top lasagna. Again, I first peeled roughly and finely chopped up a large white onion. Then I added that to a pan with a little oil, followed by three minced cloves of garlic. I just fried those off until soft and then I added in a teaspoon of dried oregano, a teaspoon of dried basil, a good pinch of sea salt and then I turned those through. I next added in a tablespoon of tomato puree, a tablespoon of soy sauce, a tablespoon of vegan Worcester sauce and a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. And then I just mixed that through together and continued to fry it off to make up the base of my sauce. I next added in a can of chopped tomatoes, mixed those through and then just filled the can halfway with water to get all of the leftover juices and poured that back in along with one cup of garlic and herb passata and I seasoned with some cracked black pepper. I gave it all a good stir through and brought it to a gentle simmer. Then I added in one and a half cups of dry soy mints also known as textured vegetable protein. The instructions say to soak this in a bowl of water for 10 minutes first, then drain it, but I always just add it straight into my sauce so that it soaks up all of the flavors from the sauce instead. And that always works better in my opinion. I gave that a good stir through until it had soaked up a lot of the liquid and then I kept that on a medium heat just to simmer gently. I next made a bechamel style sauce by adding two tablespoons of vegan butter to a separate pan along with two tablespoons of rice flour. And I just stirred that through to combine that together into a paste. I then increased the heat and slowly poured in 500 ml of oat milk as I continuously stirred it together. It should thicken the sauce as it heats up, but you also may want to get in there with a whisk in case there are any lumps of flour at all. Once all of the milk was in, I just added in a large bay leaf to give it some flavor and kept it going until it had fully thickened up. I then picked some fresh basil leaves, just a handful, and tore those up into the bolognese sauce. I took a square baking dish and layered up my lasagna next. I started with the soy mince bolognese in the base of the dish as the first layer. I then layered some lasagna sheets on top of that followed next by a layer of the bechamel style sauce. I then just repeated the process another two times and the final layer was a layer of the bolognese sauce. I then sprinkled some grated vegan cheddar cheese on the top of that and I took some of Mr Organic's chili and garlic vegan pesto and just dotted that across the top of the lasagna. I finished with some fresh basil leaves just pressed into the surface and then I placed that in the oven at 180 degrees Celsius. I had preheated my oven already and it went in for around 25 to 30 minutes until the cheese had melted and it had a lovely golden color to it. When it's out of the oven, it should look a little something like this. And this makes four good sized portions. So it's great as a family dish for friends or you can have leftovers the next day, though it is best eaten fresh. However, we always have two portions each because it is so good. I like to serve it up with a nice big salad on the side. This was just a rocket and baby leaf salad with some cucumber and baby plum tomatoes. And I had some balsamic vinegar as a dressing. I love making a good lasagna and this soy mince one is so, so good. I often forget about soy mince or textured vegetable protein because I tend to use things like tofu, 
tempeh or just legumes and beans. I believe I've shared a recipe for a tempeh mince lasagna before though, so this is quite similar to that. The pesto goes a little bit crispy on the top with the cheese, and you can use any pesto you like. There are loads of vegan pestos on the market now, but I love this chili and garlic one as it's just a little bit different. Overall, this lasagna is really meaty, saucy, cheesy, and flavorful. Lastly, for dessert, I had made some of these silky salted caramel chop pots for a blog post the day before. So we had these after dinner. These are actually made with silken tofu. So they're a protein packed dessert, really delicious. And the full recipe is in that post, which I'll link to in the description box below. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. All of the recipes are down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye.